And we're back. For those of you just joining us, welcome to the 1968 Fair Housing Act series here at The Powers Now. Please remember to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, but more importantly, download our TV app, The Powers Now TV, on any streaming platform, Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, all the streaming platforms, and listen to our podcast. We're on all the podcasts under The Powers Now Podcast where you can just learn a lot about real estate and what's going on throughout the United States. And we're looking for agents to host shows on our platform. So if you're interested and in being a thought leader, definitely reach out to me here at The Power Is Now. With us today is Nora Aguirre, folks. And I have just been so impressed with just learning her story and and just uh, the, the work that she is doing and what kind of led her to this place. Uh, where she is today as current president of the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. I want to encourage you to reach out to Nora or to a member of her team. She's very busy. Uh, reach out to NAREP and join the organization, become a member today and uh, participate in the fight for home ownership and helping people uh, get in a position to, uh, to buy or to invest and to build wealth. Uh, Nora, in your story, uh, what uh, really caught my attention was when you, when you, the time you got really engaged between 2008 and on, that's when African Americans, Latinos lost a tremendous amount of wealth through the great financial crisis. And perhaps then more than ever, you know, NAREP and NAREP and ARIA and all the minority trade associations were absolutely needed at the table to help people kind of navigate through short sales and foreclosures. I mean, we lost a tremendous amount of wealth during that time. And ironically, prior to that time, during the advent of subprime loans or what have you, we had perhaps the highest rate of homeownership and that all went to pot as well. And so you started at a unique time in our history with NAREP uh, in a leadership role. Exactly. Um, yes. So like I, like I mentioned, I started in 2008 and it was just as a member um, and really not understanding the power and nor really wanting to get, you know, deeper into it. I was working on my business. I was, you know, I was actually a team uh, buyer's agent under a team. <clears throat> so I wasn't really in any place um, either to really give back or any of that uh, of that. So years passed. I'm building myself, building my business. And, uh, you know, obviously, Building my business means I'm helping families. I'm doing the work. I'm, you know, right. um, you know, as day as days pass, I'm, I'm more committed to the, um, you know, to the industry, to um, education, and because many of them, many of the folks that were buying in in 2010, 2011, they were like I mentioned before, they were afraid of becoming homeowners, and so they were afraid because. Although homes were here in Vegas, I mean, $70,000, right? $80,000, $100,000. How can someone be afraid to buy a home for $80,000? Well, they were because they of were. what they were seeing, right? They were seeing um, folks, uh, you know, lose their life, the, the life savings, right? They were those that had bought, those that had, you know, even bought two homes, you know, they were kind of, little, you know, somewhat of a now an investor. Well, they lost everything. And so, to be able to help a first time home buyer during that period i mean it was um it took a lot of it took a lot to really understand where they were coming from because you know one can say hey you're either ready to buy or not this is $80,000 home you know you know what are you thinking about right you know let's move forward but some of these buyers were very hesitant and so being able to work with them taking them through the process and then getting to the place where two, three years later, I mean, that house was now 120,000, 140,000. And just to see the, you know, how that really helped them throughout. Again, it confirmed my decision that I made in regards to really stay, uh, stay in this industry, not just as a, you know, let me be here for a couple of years. Let me, you know, make, a, you know, make some money, like a lot, unfortunately, a lot of real estate agents think, but let me actually uh, make this my career because it really checks a box for me uh, on all the things that I want to be and contribute to my community. And so uh, NAREP through that time, like you mentioned, was doing work. A lot of our, my, you know, our trade organizations were putting in the work, helping, you know, there was a first look program during that period where we were saying, Hey, if you're an investor, you have to wait on the sidelines 
really even present an offer to this home. We're going to, you know, it's going to be, and that, you know, happened through the good work of, you know, uh, the leaders in our trade organizations, you know, NAREP, it was so important. So, and, and also big shout out here in Nevada, right? It was something that happened through um, Senator Harry Reid. And so that really changed things and gave buyers an opportunity where homes were 80,000. Of course, all the investors want them, but hey, we're going to give a, a first time home buyer the opportunity to go after that home and to be the homeowner. And we're going to do that this way. And there was a policy behind it. And it was so amazing to be able to kind of see that happen. Again, I was not really involved with the organization 2015 comes. And that's when I realized, gosh, the work that, that the organization has been doing and the work that still needs to be done. Um, it's, it's definitely, you know, I have to get involved and I have to do my part. And so um, that's, that's where we are. Like I said today, Eric, um, it, it's the work continues and there's still much more to do. So I do encourage anybody, like you mentioned, um, anybody that is a thought leader to really stand with us um, united in, in the effort to continue to help our minority communities. NARA took the initiative in 2008, <clears throat> along with other minority trade associations, to bring about the First Look program and other set-asides uh, from asset management companies and uh, agencies, Fannie and Freddie, uh, because REOs were, were uh, significant at that time, and minorities weren't the table weren't able to participate. And so they took the initiative then, and they're still taking the initiative now. As we look at the Fair Housing Act of 1968, and here we are, you know, a number of years later, 56 years later, what initiative is NAREP taking to, you know, ensure that fair housing is a reality for Latinos and, and others? And, um, and uh, what, what, what special programs are, are they working on to uh, ensure that the training and, and advocacy is happening at the state level and, and the local level to ensure that fair housing uh, is a reality for Latinos? Absolutely. So, you know, like I mentioned, NAREP's foundation is built on, you know, advocating for policies, right, um, for to bring home ownership closer for all Americans. You know, our, poli our policy objectives reflect this mantra. And, you know, we release this every single year in our, in our state of Hispanic home ownership report. We go to the Hill, we talk to our elected officials, we do this once a year, um, like other trade organizations as well do. Um, but you know, I'll give you the example, right, of what of, of one of those. It's housing affordability, right? NARP supports policies to make housing more affordable, including using you know a, a federal levers to encourage the building of new housing, creating new opportunities with existing properties, and lowering costs for mortgage uh, mortgage financing. Another one is access to credit. NARP is advocating for accessibility for first time home buyers and the creation of real estate lending incentives in the Hispanic community. Um, industry practices are also very important. Uh, NARP believes that, you know, we need to ensure that Latino home buyers are adequately represented. And so um, we want to see that there are professionals that look like them in the community, right? That we are focusing on that. And also the construction workforce um, that, that has the tools to, and the resources that they need to build communities. Um, and at macroeconomic issues, <clears throat> NARP is advocating to expand um, access to small business capital, creating um, and expanding access uh, to small business is so important and uh, providing workforce diversity and engaging, um, you know, equitable immigration practices are all part of this ecosystem that will accelerate home ownership opportunities. So in all, what I can tell you is, you know, what we stand for, what we're doing on a local national level is we are preparing the professionals on the ground, boots on the ground with, you know, what is happening with the latest programs um, and so that they can go back into the communities and really pour and give that education and the resources that our communities do need to become homeowners. And so, and currently, um, as you may know, there's, you know, a lot of debate in regards to the importance of buyer broker representation and all of this. We are a huge, uh, you know, voice in this space uh, because we do feel that uh, uh, by first time home buyers need representation, period. Right. <laughs> and 
will they be able to, you know, afford it or not afford it on their own? That's a question for, you know, maybe another podcast. But the reality ends up being that that is a space as well that we are very um, uh, focused on making sure that we have a voice. We are sitting at the table and we are making sure that we're delivering um, the information that the sometimes our policy makers are uh, po- policy they don't know what's happening. They just kind of hear a little bit of you know um, uh, a, a little bit of the you know the fuss. But when once we get down to really what how it will it affect our first time home buyers, um, our minority um, mm-hmm. uh, first first time home buyers, and we give them the stories and we give them the examples, um, then they begin to think and rethink how you know that isn't necessarily what is being portrayed maybe on you know uh, our media and things of the sort so no it's there's a lot of work eric <laughs> there's a lot of work um but again if someone wants to visit you know what what we're doing we release the state of hispanic state of hispanic uh homeownership report every single year <laughs> it has a wealth of knowledge a wealth of information it also has information on um, the communities that we have that we see that are mortgage ready that have the largest population of mortgage ready Latinos. So, you know, if, if someone, you know, a company uh, is looking to provide more resources, they may know exactly what markets are really going to need those resources because they're really up and coming and growing. So this data is, is a wealth of knowledge um, that we're finding that companies are utilizing to their benefit and saying, okay, this is where our this is where we're needed. This is what we're going to do. And so the report is released once a year. On top of that, we also have the Hispanic Wealth Project, which, which is another organ- sister organization of ours. And there, we release as well a report every two years, um, going into the wealth gap that we have in America right now, uh, our Latinos. And so it is uh, it is important to stay informed. And I think that's one of the biggest things that someone can do in, in the space of advocating is understand it. And then from there, be able to kind of speak to people that have um, the opportunity to make a difference. The Latino community is the fastest growing community here in California, perhaps nationwide. And you mentioned <laughs> a, a statistic in California, uh, what is it? Uh, 70% of first time home buyers will be Latinos. Uh, That's correct an, me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> that is, that is a, uh, nation that is in the that's not just in california eric that's nationwide. In, yep yep nationwide wow. correct so, mm-hmm. so i mean <laughs> we, we all need to learn to speak spanish that's for sure to uh, be able to serve that uh that population uh but based on your experience and and i'm, I'm not sure if you <clears> can speak you know uh, officially for narep but the 1968 fair housing act was designed to prevent discrimination uh, do you think that it's done its job, you know, and, you know, how, what, what, what more can be done uh, to strengthen the law, to make it more effective? Because, as you know, um, within the last five years, there's been the attorney general lawsuits for redlining. We know about the Newsday uh, expose on realtors in New Jersey. And so how do you how do you view the, the law today? Oh, <clears throat> well, what I can tell you is I'm, you know, I'm the type of person, you know, I, uh, I come from a, uh, the thought, the, the thought uh, that, you know, people are doing what they can do. There's definitely a lot, still a lot of barriers and is a lot doing everything. I can tell you that it's, it really started a movement, right? And it started something that was so important. And the fact that I believe we have a lot of leaders right now picking this up. And it's been not just, you know, in recent years, I think we've had this coming in in the last decade, I think is so important. Um, Is it, you know, where, is it where I feel that it's perfect? Absolutely not. I think there's a lot of work, but there, that's, you know, as part of the military. So that's the thing in government, things do move slowly. I mean, even if you ask me right now today and being the leader of a, of a national organization, where 40,000 members and, you know, it, some things do take time, right? Um, uh, so I could tell you that there's areas that maybe, um, but uh, but no, I, I see things as, posi- as positives, not as a negative uh, right now in regards to us just staying and in collaboration and making sure that we're pushing forward. I mean, could we go into um, the negatives? We absolutely can, but we can do that in anything. 
in anything, you know? Um, so I'm not going to, you know, there's not in a specific time because I personally, even in our business, it's, well, there's a barrier there. Well, why is there that barrier? Is it because I'm, you know, is it because I'm uh, Hispanic? Is it because I'm woman? Is it because I've moved past that in my, in my business or in my life uh, personally? So I really don't bring that, you know, uh, into, in, into it. It's more of what can I do about it now? And do I have the voice? And am I prepared to uh, let my voice be heard? Right. And that's pretty much what it boils down to. And so, yeah, if that answers your question, Eric. <laughs> well, in, in answer to my question, uh, have you been a victim yourself of discrimination uh, in your journey to home ownership and, and building a real estate business? And, uh, and, you know, what does fair housing mean to you personally? I can tell you for me, you know, fair housing, uh, you know, fair housing for me is about providing opportunities, um, you know, for the greater number of Latinos who represent, you know, the segment, um, you know, that's most critically growing in the United States housing industry and the, and the economy. Um, you know, the numbers don't lie. So I believe that fair housing um, really do support and will help uh, us, you know, get to our, um, get to the numbers that we see are possible for our community. So Latinos have an annual economic output. So the GDP of, you know, 2.8 trillion, right? And, and housing, it represents, you know, that represents over 16% of the U.S. GDP. You know, Latinos have a national homeownership rate, like I mentioned before, 49.5%, with a median age um, of 30, right? Which is, you know, a critical mass of uh, Latinos are just entering their prime homeownership years, right? Latinos are projected to make, like I mentioned, 70% of the net new homeowners over the next 20 years. There are 8.3 million Latinos aged 45 and under who are mortgage ready, but aren't homeowners. So you tell me if fair housing is important to us, um, you know, and housing inventory remains to be one of the biggest barriers to increasing homeownership, right? So we're pushing and advocating in that space so much. Um, Latino homeowners have 28 times the wealth compared to Latino renters, right? We have data for that. And, and so we know the work that we have to do is going to become so much more important um, than what it's already been for our organization for the last 24 years that it's it's been here. Um, and, you know, over the past decade, Latinos account for over half of the nation's population growth. That's over 80% of the labor force growth. So empowering this engine for growth is my personal and professional mission. Nora, you have cited some staggering numbers. Just the GDP of the Latino community alone, 2.8 billion. It's a country. I'm not sure where it ranks in countries. It's got to be in the top 10. Uh, and then the number of people, the fifth, as a country, Latinos are fifth <laughs> in terms of GDP. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. and, and then the number of mortgage ready uh, Latinos. I mean, so the future, when I just hear the, the numbers you've shared with us is, is extremely bright for the Latino community. If we could only just solve the, the inventory issue and creating more housing, uh, because the population, in fact, I read some uh, somewhere, I believe it was on the state website, that California particularly is projecting to be 50 million people by 2050. 50 million people on a state where our coastline is eroding. Where are we going to put all those people? And that's just California. There are other states like New York and Seattle, or coastal states, and that are they have an inventory issue uh, and a population issue. And they're on a collision course. So inventory seems to be um, the primary solution of we need. That's the primary problem which we need to find a solution for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. What we are seeing, and and that's again part of our um, state of Hispanic ownership report, is that we are seeing Latinos move. Um, you know, at a staggering percentage. Um, kind of to the middle of America, right? Where homes are more affordable. There's, um, you know, so we're seeing a lot of those, um, you know, fast growing um, demographics, for example, in Tennessee, South Carolina, South Dakota, Maine, mm. Montana, um, because they're able to, you know, find homes. And so they may be making less money or, but they want to become homeowners. They want to build, you know, they want to yes. put their roots down and build, um, you know, a, a home. Um, so build a family. So at this, at this point, what we're seeing is that possibly 
folks are moving from, you know, these bigger cities to smaller cities and mid in the Midwest, right? So let's see what continues trending. But again, we we release that every year. And so uh, we know that um, Latinos are willing to, uh, to cross um, state lines in order to make sure that they become homeowners and, uh, and, and, and especially find homes that, that, that really suit them. Right. Because in some of these larger cities, we understand the construction, they're turning into kind of townhome living, very right. small yards, things of the sort. And so that is not necessarily what many of them really see or as their vision of home of a home. So mm -hmm. they're saying, if we need a little bit more space, we need a little bit more land and we, oh and, and we need to move. You know, uh, places like Texas, Texas has, has seen tremendous growth, Oklahoma, right? Um, even Tennessee, right? I was in Nashville um, this past week and uh, the city is growing and uh, and, and it is a l largely because of the Hispanic community is just moving in and finding that they can uh, find work and they can become homeowners. Laura, I really appreciate you taking time uh, to talk with me today about the 1968 Fair Housing Act. And the great work that the NAREP is doing, and I could go on for, we could do a whole nother hour segment just uh, in, <laughs> in examining all the uh, the challenges and the opportunities. Uh, but I appreciate the time that you have provided us today to, to share in or participate in the conversation about the 1968 Fair Housing Act. I want to give you the final word, um, you know, as a member, as a leader of NAREP, um, as we examine the 1968 Fair Housing Act and we examine homeownership as a whole, uh, what would be your final words of encouragement to real estate professionals, to, to, uh, to future homeowners, uh, um, uh, as we all try to you know, unite and, 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 and take this journey to building wealth in real estate uh, and uh, stabilizing our communities? No, it's important to continue to have the belief and the hope, you know, homeownership is the gateway uh, to the middle class. And, uh, you know, we we know that Hispanics are driving the growth, but there is so much potential for, uh, you know, all minorities and underserved communities to become homeowners. And so, you know, in our we believe that by promoting fair housing practices and creating opportunities uh, for greater homeownership, all of America will benefit. So with that, you know, I think... Uh, you know, I, I think that it's so important that everyone does do their part and understand that they can make a difference. Laura, if you could give me one reason why someone should join NAREP today, if they're a real estate agent watching or listening to this and they're not a member, can you tell them what they need to do right now to, get, to become a part of this incredible movement uh, with NAREP? So if you want to be part of NAREP and our movement, but also in the movement of helping first time home buyers, no matter what race, no matter what background you are, but if you desire, you can join us at uh, narep.org. It's, uh, you know, if you want to be part of a local chapter, it's only $49 a year. If you want to become part of our national, it's $199 a year. And we are pushing forward, helping and making sure that we have a voice in this space when it is so important. So we appreciate the support that you have. We appreciate your voice as well. And please get out there and be part of this movement. Well, there you have it, folks. Another great interview with an industry leader, Nora Aguirre, president of the National Association of Real Estate Professionals. Uh, and she's in the game, in the business of real estate, and she's in the business of advocacy for Latinos and for really anyone interested in becoming a homeowner. Thank you, Gary Acosta, for making this interview possible. And I look forward to interviewing other leaders across the country to talk about real estate and the challenges for Latinos and for people in general in uh, various markets across the country. Um, folks, I want to encourage you to join the organization. I'm a member of uh, NAREP, and uh, I encourage you to join them today. Go to the website uh, and uh, become a member today and support this wonderful organization. What I love about what I do is that we are a resource for the community and for the industry. And so we're looking for agents that want to have their own TV show and podcast on our platform. We can help them produce it and distribute it and be thought leaders in their local market. 
We're looking for industry leaders to come to our show and to, to share their insight as to what's happening to the federal, state, and local level to talk about real estate whether it be residential or commercial. So please reach out to us. Please remember to download our TV app on the Google Play Store, Powers Now TV on the Apple Store, Powers Now TV. Please download our podcast on Powers Now Podcast on all podcast platforms. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. We are there, folks, to serve you. The Powers Now is leading the conversation about real estate, and I love it. In August of this year, it'll be 15 years we've been broadcasting. And so please share this information. Thank you for joining us today. Remember, we are at our best and we maximize our success when we act now. The power is now. Everyone knows the power of social media and the impact a strong online presence has in this day and age. But most real estate agents simply do not have the time to manage all the advertising and marketing details. And that's where the Power Is Now Media steps in. We are the answer you have been looking for. Let us help put your brand on the map. We will create customized graphics for weekly full page ads, social media content, video, and podcast content for you. Sound complicated and expensive? It is affordable and easy. We have the best experts on the job. Go to thepowersnow.com and find us under the VIP Agent tab to learn more. This is the future of real estate. Join today, thepowersnow.com.